your Bible, if you will, and let's turn to Philippians 4. We're going to read verse 6 and 7. If you will, when you get there, will you stand and we'll just read these two short verses and Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Wait till everybody's there. Did you find it, Diarana? Do you need some help? Is Julie will help you. Philippians 4. It's a very short book, so those are kind of hard to... Sometimes you flip right over them. All right, Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I just ask that as we study uh, these two verses, and we study prayer and supplication, that... Um, we would be able to learn something from your word, and I ask that you would teach us tonight, because I know that I'm not going to be able to teach anything, but your word can teach us, and I pray that um, our minds are open, our eyes are open, and that we're uh, paying attention to your word, and um, that we leave here um, being encouraged and having a little bit more knowledge about, um, about your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you may be seated. All right, so I have one page of notes. All right, so I'm just going to make this quick, and then um, I want to pray, take time to pray for our church. So um, a couple of verses about supplication. Um, Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Psalms, the book of Psalms, in chapter 6. There's a couple, there's several mentions of supplication through the Bible, and one of them is in Psalm 6, verse 9. It says, The Lord hath heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. That is being said with confidence. It's not, I hope the Lord hears my prayer. He's, the Lord will receive my prayer. And then turn to Psalm 30, in verse 8. So this, again, is David writing, and he says, I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made supplication. So I want to just define that word, supplication. Um, I think we all know what prayer is, right? We know what, we maybe are not the best prayer warriors, and we don't have, you know, prayers that we say every word correctly, but it's just talking to God. It's communicating with God. And supplication is the action of asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. So as you're praying, as you pray, and you're also giving supplication unto the Lord, you're begging God for something. And you're begging him earnestly and and humbly. We're not telling God, I want this, you better answer my prayer. That's not how it works. It's very, it's a humble asking of God. And then let's turn to Daniel. Daniel is a great example of being a prayer warrior. For those of you who don't know the background of Daniel, he was a, a man who was um, in living in a foreign country, basically as a prisoner, um, although he certainly had some freedoms, but he was living in a foreign land and this, he was such a righteous man that everyone hated him. So I know some of us have experiences with that, that when you do right, and when you stand up for right, and you do God's word, some people are not going to like that, because you're, has anyone ever been called goody two-shoes? You know, this, that's kind of a simple little insult, but Daniel was a goody two-shoes, goody two-shoes. So, he was also a prayer warrior. Look at Daniel 6, 11. So they made a law 
they tricked the king into making a law that it would be illegal to pray. And the thing about Daniel was that he prayed all he prayed on a regular basis and he would open his window and he would pray facing outside and people knew that he was praying. He wasn't doing it to boast, you know, in the New Testament we hear about not praying as the um, the religious people on the corner, you know, standing and praying out loud. This is not what Daniel was doing. He was in the privacy of his home, but he opened his window. So they made a law that it would be illegal for, to pray. Now here, look in Daniel 6, 11. So it says, Then these men assembled and found, found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. So there is a precedent set by great men of faith in the Old Testament through David, through Daniel, and carried right into um, the New Testament with in Acts. They were praying and supplicating. And Paul is telling the church in Philippians to do everything by prayer and supplication. So um, I just wanted to uh, encourage us tonight, and let's, let's turn to Acts now. Acts chapter 1. So I, I feel like the church of Acts f- found themselves in a very similar position to where we are now or where we have been. You know, the, the thing to keep in mind about the Bible and these great, great lives and the great uh, lives these people let, live for the Lord, you know, we read the highlights of their lives. And we don't, maybe, I, maybe there's no way of telling how long of time went in between these great events. You know, it's not that these amazing miracles were happening to these guys just every week. There was time in between them, but then we look at their their life and we see the highlights. And then we ask ourselves, well, how come we don't have those highlights all the time? But, you know, as a church, we do have highlights. I mean, we can think about the amazing things that we saw and that we participated in, the ways that we were able to serve over the last five years. And my, in my mind, I think about um, that one Sunday, and I know some of you were here, where we had a, about 180 people in church. We had a missionary from Mexico. And so um, him and Pastor Holman uh, went, and there's a bunch of people that only spoke Spanish that they went and asked to come to church. So we had a, I think about 20 or 30 people that spoke Spanish and the missionary was preaching to them in Spanish. Then we had um, about 60 bus kids and we had, I think, I don't remember who was preaching to them, maybe um, Pilant, what's his uh, name? Was he, maybe, maybe Randall was doing that. Then we had a Vietnamese department where there was about 30 or 40 people and there was preaching going on in Vietnamese, and then Pastor Holman is here preaching in English. So we had 180 people, four or three different languages. It was just kind of a, a highlight, you know. And there's other highlights, you know, vacation, Bible school, and all these uh, different things that we were able to do. And I feel like uh, the disciples of Jesus, they found themselves in the upper room, you know, their Lord and Savior and in the beginning of Acts has just gone to heaven and they're just kind of, I mean, they've already gone past the point where Jesus had died, raised from the dead, and then they went a-fishing, you know. Well, Jesus went after them. And that's when, the, you know, Jesus asked Peter if he loves me more than these, talking about the fish. Do you love me? Do you love... Is it me or did you love my people? You love them more than these, right? Isn't that what he asked him? Lovest thou me more than these? I think that's what he asked him. So um, do you love me more than the fish on the ground, you know? And so Peter comes back, and they're all back together again. Everything's great, and then Jesus goes to heaven. And then they're just staring up there like, what are we supposed to do now? And so, you know, this is where we find them in Acts uh, chapter 1, verse 12. And think about the highlights that they had. You know, the, the ministry of Jesus, the feeding of the 5,000, all the miracles, all these amazing things that Jesus did that they experienced. And here they are. There's only 120 of them. And we know that there, there were multitudes. 
And everywhere Jesus went, it says many believed on him there. So here they are, 120, about 120. So uh, verse 12, it says, Then they returned unto, unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is uh, from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room, where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So they are finding themselves in this situation, and they are just continuing in one accord in prayer and supplication. And then let's go um, to chapter 2, verse 1. It says that, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So they had unity, they kept the unity going, and then this is right before they start getting more highlights and more amazing things start happening in their ministry as a church, their individual ministries. You know, we all have individual ministries because we all work in different places. Our church has ministries, uh, plural, and, um, you know, God is about to bless them beyond comprehension and um, they find themselves. But before they do that, they are praying and supplicating. And so, um, you know, Jesus promised them in John 14. Let's go ahead and turn there. John 14, 11. John 14, 11. 11 through 13. It says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do. And why would he say that other people are going to do better works than him? Because I go unto my Father. So the work that Jesus started is now up to them. And the work is still up to us. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, in Jesus' name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And that's why when we pray, we always say, in Jesus' name. We ask everything in his name. That's what he told us to do. So um, I just wanted to take a, um, the rest of the time, and I, was, I asked uh, Lloyd and Ken and Donald, he uh, is not here. He's uh, hopefully okay. Is that one of your neighbors? The yeah. Okay. Well, Donald. No, no, no. Donald, he'll be all right. God will protect him, and I think Donald will be fine. So. Um, I'll go ahead and just open us in prayer. And I just want to take the, the rest of the time, and I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to ask Lloyd to pray, and then Ken's going to close us. And specifically, just want to pray for our church and for Pastor Haley. I want uh, us to just lift him up in prayer and um, just ask God to bless us.